Thank you for all of you uh, tuning in today. It's so good to be able to speak with you, and I'm looking forward to uh, journeying with you on this retreat week. Uh, technically, this is not the beginning of the retreat today, um, but this talk uh, was already set for the calendar, so we're going to use it as an information sharing session. I want you all to know uh, kind of what's going on this week, and uh, you know that way you know what to expect on the retreat. Um, by now, you should have all gotten the booklets or either be in the process. There, there are a lot of people, so you're probably in the process of getting the booklet. Some of you may not have got it yet. Um, but, and we'll talk about that book as well. So I'd like to begin this session today by sharing a Chinese saying with you. And I'm fond of this saying, and I know I've used it before. Um, so here it is. May you be born in an interesting time. May you be born in an interesting time. What I like about that phrase is the blessing or curse of it really comes down to the eye of the beholder. Certainly, we are all living through interesting times with this COVID-19 precautions. And of course, living in an interesting time doesn't mean anything good or bad. It really comes down to how you look at it. It depends on how open we are to the times we find ourselves in. As Joseph Campbell says, you know, whether we can give a hearty yes to our adventure, and certainly, if anything, uh, this time of COVID-19 has been an adventure, if nothing else. And so now, uh, let us go ahead and, and talk about our own adventure for the week, which is the retreat, and uh, let's go over that so you know kind of what to expect. Um, and I will be reading from a script here. To, uh, so if you see me looking kind of beyond the camera, I'm reading a script to make sure I don't forget anything. So the number one thing I want to share with you is the retreat booklet. Uh, by now, all of you have probably received the retreat booklet or you are in the process of receiving it. Um, you should have it by Monday morning. Uh, that's our goal. Um, it's about 30 pages, the booklet is, and it's in chronological order. So if you begin with the first page on Monday, or I guess it would be probably the second page, but when you, the whole process goes in chronological order from top to bottom. And, um, and so that's a very helpful tool. Also the schedule for each one of the days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, the schedule for that day is on that page. So Monday's schedule is the first thing you'll see on Monday's page, and Tuesdays will have the same, etc. cetera. Uh, I made 75 copies of this book, so there should be enough for everybody, but if somehow we miss you, please let me know. Also, if something went wrong in the making of your book, like if the printer did not print something properly, or if the binding is falling apart or any number of things. If something happens to the book, even if you lose it, let me know and I will get you another one. Uh, we should have more than enough books. Um, I've included all the mass readings uh, in the booklets as well. And also, as you know, many of you are writers, some are note takers, some are artists, some of you are poets, and some of you are theologians. I have included ample writing space in each page if you feel compelled to write. I don't want you to feel obligated because certainly, you know, this is your retreat, your personal retreat if you choose to take it. And um, what you do on this retreat is, is really up to you. You know, you're the one who makes the retreat. And if you feel compelled to write or if someone, Joan Chidester, says something that really strikes you, I just want you to know there is ample writing space to be able to record that. Also, these uh, books are yours, so feel compelled to keep them if you want or recycle them at the end of the tree, whichever you want to do. Uh, these books are yours. Um, the second thing I want to talk about is the retreat theme. So the retreat theme is the sacrament of the present moment. And that's a phrase that Richard Rohr uses in one of the talks that we will hear. And he uses this phrase to describe his experience with contemplation. So the purpose of this retreat is to help us become more introspective, to kind of move deeper within ourselves, more contemplative. Often we find ourselves stuck thinking about the past or the present, 
for the future. But really, if you're thinking about any of those things, you're not actually in the present moment as, as uh, these contemplative masters will talk about. Um, so our goal is to re reconnect with the present by turning our focus inward. And we will be using three forms of prayer in addition to the talks that we will hear um, to recenter ourselves. Uh, the first will be spoken prayer, which will be uh, our sacramental prayer, the Mass. I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, the second will be the meditative prayer, which will involve um, scripture readings. Um, so in the booklet, I've provided all the scripture readings. So the meditative portion, uh, if you read those uh, before Mass or reflect on them, um, and once again, there's writing space. So that, that's sort of the, the meditative part to sort of allow yourselves to open up. And the third part, the, the large component um, of the day will be contemplative. And this is really unstructured time and you can do the contemplation um, when and how you feel that you want to. Um, certainly most of the talks are uh, by, you know, the four individuals uh, in your booklet, uh, Thomas Keating and Joan Chittister, uh, Cynthia Bourgeau and uh, Richard Rohr, uh, certainly they will talk mostly about contemplative uh, conversations, contemplative prayer, contemplative thought. Let me see where I'm at here. So the third category, so the first category is the spoken prayer, the sacramental prayer. The second category is the meditative so the reading of scripture and figuring out what that what God is saying to us through that scripture. Um, the third one is contemplative. It's prayer without words. Um, that's what one of the one of the talks will be about. Prayer without words. So each of these talks are public. They are available on the internet for free. And similar to how a museum may curate uh, art and display it in a particular way in a museum, uh, these have been curated for this retreat and are ordered and displayed to, to promote the theme. If you have any questions about any of that, please don't hesitate to, uh, to ask me. The daily schedule is the third thing I want to talk about. So let me, let me check this real quick. I, want, I don't want to miss anything, so I'm going to go back over this real quick. Okay. So number three, the daily schedule. In the booklet, every day begins with its own daily schedule, and it lists the, the talk titles and speakers. But this is the general schedule. So at 9.30, there will be a 30-minute retreat talk. From 10 to 10.30 is where we'll have the reading and reflecting on the scriptures of the day. From 10.30 onward, uh, for about 30 minutes, uh, we will be celebrating Mass with Father Jason Harris of Bardstown. And he will be broadcasting Mass from two of his churches, and this will be from Monday to Thursday. These will all be broadcast Masses. On Friday, he will be broadcasting a mass, a pre-recorded mass. Let me add that. He will be broadcasting a pre-recorded mass uh, from the uh, church at Loretto. Uh, Father Jason will be saying mass completely alone, and, we'll, and we will not be receiving Holy Communion per the instructions of Archbishop Kurtz in the time of COVID-19. In the afternoon at three o'clock, we will have a one hour talk by one of the four mentioned previously. At 6.30, Father Jason will broadcast exposition from St. Thomas, specifically for us. This time will help to provide a communal element to our contemplation. During exposition, you will know that you are not struggling with contemplation alone, but the whole retreat community is struggling too. As Andy Bashir says, we are alone together. And the same is true with contemplation from 6.30 onward. 
as there is not one spirituality, there is not one way of doing prayer. Everyone in our infirmary is unique. And so I've tried to design this retreat so that it offers something for every resident of the infirmary. If you are drawn to a mantra style prayer such as the rosary, or if you are drawn to particular spiritual songs, all of these have a home in this retreat. As Thomas Keating says in one of his talks, there is no wrong way to do it as long as you do it. So once again, if at any point, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Um, I would like to end this talk today with a little short story um, from Joseph Campbell, the mythologist. I apologize if um, you have heard this story before and that if my summary deviates from the story, uh, number one, I'm, I'm trying to condense it, but also um, I'm using this story to talk about that inward journey that contemplation brings us to uh, and that we all find ourselves in. This story is from the Middle Ages and it's about King Arthur and his knights and so it's a little fun as well. One day King Arthur and all of his knights including Galahad were gathered together and were ready for a banquet. And lo and behold, suddenly the Holy Grail appeared before him, before them, held by two angels, and they were hovering in the midst of the round table. A divine command was spoken, uttered by the Spirit. Seek what you have seen. Seek what you have seen. And all of the knights, Arthur and Galahad included, swore that they would answer the call and they would not feast until they had found the Holy Grail, the source of the vision. While each knight debated among themselves about what they saw, where to look, or what the Holy Grail actually was, Galahad sat pondering. No one agreed on anything because no one saw the exact same vision. No one agreed on anything because no one saw the exact same vision. And so Galahad decided that it would be a disgrace to set off on a quest with the other knights. Alone he would enter the dark forest where there was no path to seek the grail. Joseph Campbell says that this is the myth of the hero's journey. You enter the forest at the darkest point where there is no path, where there is no way or no path. If there is a way or a path, that is someone else's path and you are not on your own. If you follow someone else's way, Joseph Campbell says, you're not going to realize your potential. And so in essence, this is what contemplation is. Another person can tell you how to contemplate. They can provide uh, guides or methods, or they can tell you their stories. But at the end of the day, only you can enter in your own interior life. No one else can do it for you. No one else can help you to go there. Regardless of the signposts, the guides, the tips, or the helpful directions, the person who is doing the seeking must always turn within. And that is what I hope for everyone for this retreat. I hope that it is a tool to help you turn inward so that you may find what it is that you seek. Thank you for letting me share this moment in time with you. And I hope that uh, you have a very blessed retreat. And uh, like I said, if you need anything, just reach out to me. Thank you. Have a great evening.